Hey there everybody, and welcome to part 3 of this SE Linux review for the RHCSA. We can get going here by working on this objective that has to do with using SE Linux Boolean settings. So Booleans, as the name suggests, are tunables that allow you to change the behavior of parts of the existing policy to allow or accommodate for common things that you might want to do with your services. And with that being said, let me get into the terminal here. There are two families of commands that I'd like you to be aware of for managing booleans. So I'll just pull up the man pages for these real quick. So we'll start with se manage boolean right here. And this bears some resemblance to the other se manage commands that we've been using so far. And now for the other set of commands that I want to show you, that'll be get se bool and set se bool. So here's the man page for set se bool, and yeah, the main difference from what I found by reading these man pages and testing things out is that the default behavior of se manage boolean is to write persistent configuration changes that'll work after a reboot, while set se bool on the other hand by default changes the runtime settings unless you pass the dash p flag for persistent. Uh, another thing about se manage that I really like is that it gives you a more detailed output when you do a list. So uh, this is useful. It'll show you like a description of the Boolean as well as the default state, which is always handy for making sure it persists. Very useful for the RHCSA. And uh, yeah, I would really just want to call se manage the friendlier command in our toolbox, but I'll make sure to show us all three commands for completeness. Okay, so uh, let me quit out of these mans. And, uh, yeah, we can start by just continuing on with our HTTPD example that we've been working on throughout these videos. And what I'd like you to know is that there is a Boolean to allow HTTPD to read users home directories so that it can work with the user dir HTTPD module. So what we can do to start is just take a look at all of the Booleans on our system and then drill down into the ones about HTTPD. And we can do that with a get se bool a like this. And here are all of the booleans on our system. And as you can see, some of them are flipped onto on while others are off. So that's good to know about. But we can get further into this by just grepping for httpd. And there are also plenty just for httpd itself. And if I scroll up here a little bit, uh, we'll find this one called httpd enable homeders and it's currently flipped on to off. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this in my clipboard for later, but yeah, I just wanted to take note of that. Uh, so that was cool and all, but let me show you how to do something similar with se manage boolean as well. So if I do a dash L for list and I pipe this into less, what I want you to take note of is uh, there's a description field and a default field over here. So the default field is going to tell you whether this is going to be persistent, um, whether it'll be on or off after a reboot. And the description is always just useful for searching for stuff if you don't know exactly what the Boolean is called. Right. And um, of course, I can still do a search for HTTPD uh, home DIRS, whatever it was called. And yep, there it is. And right now, uh, after a reboot, uh, d by default, it's going to be set to off. So that's just something to be aware of. Okay, cool. So yeah, uh, this was all really valuable information, but uh, before we set this Boolean, uh, let's make sure that we uh, get our situation ready first to actually use it. So we wanna host a user's home directory with HTTPD, right? Well, to do that, we're gonna need a user account with a home directory. Uh, so that's pretty easy. And then we'll just need to put some files in there and then configure HTTPD to serve it with the user dir module. So I'll go ahead and add a user, with user add dash M and call this user banana. And the dash M by the way is to assert that we wanna make a home directory, but that's the default, so it doesn't really matter. But yeah, there it is, there's our banana directory, pretty cool. And um, yeah, next we can go ahead and edit the HTTPD configuration file. So I think it's called userdir.conf. So HTTPD conf.d, and we're looking for that one, userdir.conf. 
And up at the top, you're going to see this big blurb warning you about permissions. So we'll take care of that later. Uh, it's just something to keep in mind. But I'm going to scroll down over here and uncomment this line for public underscore HTML. And I'm also going to add a line over here that says user dir enabled for the banana user. So this will just enable it for this user called banana and nobody else, which is fine enough for this demo. All right, so I'll just write and quit the file. And uh, since we just changed the HTTPD configuration, we're going to need to do a system CTL restart HTTPD. And we got no errors there, so that's all swell. And uh, we'll also take care of that permissions issue and make some files to serve for the banana users uh, home directory. So I'll do a chmod 711 slash home banana. And if I do an ls-ln slash home, you'll see that it set the execute bits for group and other. That's all it really did. And uh, I'm also going to log in as banana with sug-banana. And the dash is going to give me a login shell so I get dropped into the home directory. And then I'll just make dir a public underscore HTML uh, directory. And inside of here, I'm going to write an index.html file. And I'll just put something in here like that. And yeah, uh, I can log out of banana. And what we can do is just quickly test this out. Uh, just forewarning here, uh, it's not going to work because of that Boolean. But we can still just try. So just to see if it works or not. Uh, so localhost 4080, that works fine. Even the special directory that we set up in the previous video works fine as well. But now let's try to access tilde banana. And bam, we got the forbidden error again. All right, so uh, this is a good sign that we need to check on that Boolean. Uh, that's what's holding us back. So what I'll do is just run set se bool. Um, well, we can check the state of the Boolean first by doing an se manage boolean dash l grep httpd home errors and there it is it's set to off right now and just for uh that'll be for our comparison and now i'll just run set se bool and then the uh, boolean and set that to one and what you'll see now is that the runtime setting is set to on which is enough for us to be able to test that it works and it does but uh, we want this to persist, right? So we're actually going to want to do a set se bool dash capital P for persist. And you notice that it, that it took a little bit longer. And now uh, both fields are set to on. So that's just excellent. And of course, it's still going to work here as well. Okay, so that's pretty nice. Uh, but let me also show you how to do this with the se manage command by itself. So what I can do is just run an se manage boolean dash m for modify and then a dash dash off to turn this off and what you'll see is that it'll set both fields to off just like that likewise i can also do a dash dash on to set it on and it's going to set both fields to on so that means that this is going to work after a reboot cool now uh so uh just to show you again it still works that's fine. But yeah, um, I think we did a good job here. Uh, we about covered this objective. So let's actually move into the final one about diagnosing and addressing routine SE Linux policy violations. And I mean, throughout these videos, we've been responding accordingly to violations by making the needed configuration changes. But this time, we'll try to use some of the tools that exist to help us to get to the root of a problem. And so this would involve us working with the SE troubleshoot server package. So uh, let's just clear the screen and make sure that we have that. So we um, install SE troubleshoot dash server. And I have it. So that's just great. And uh, now we'll just need to create a problem for it to pick up on. So to do that, I'm just going to touch a file uh, in slash SRB special, one of the directories that HTTPD serves, and I'll create a file called problem in here. And uh, this is not going to be a problem file just yet, 
because the default permissions or default file context for this directory is for httpd syscontent-t. So right now, actually, uh, it's going to work just fine if I try to access it from the server. It's able to enumerate that it's there. But we need this to be a problem, right? So what we'll do is just do a chcon-t and set the type context to this file to uh, shadow underscore t type context. So this is definitely not something that httpd would be able to access. And then I'll just do it on the file. So that's slash SRV special problem. Now, if I check again, it's set to the shadow type context. So now if I go back to the web server, uh, HTTPD is not going to be able to uh, enumerate that file very much. So it's not going to show up in the directory listing. And also uh, we're going to have a policy violation on our hands. So if I tail slash var log messages, the troubleshooting server is going to give us some really helpful output. It looks pretty jumbled over here, but uh, you'll notice this for more complete SE Linux messages run SE alert. So we're going to want to do that. Uh, it's going to make it a lot easier to read. So I'll just run that um, just by pasting it in here. And this looks a lot better. All right. So if I scroll up here um, a little bit, you'll notice that SE, um, SE alert or SE troubleshoot server is totally on point. We should be running the restorecon command to get this problem file uh, up to spec with the correct type context for that directory. So that's the right answer to this problem, uh, but there are other options that it lists in here, like to create a custom policy module to explicitly allow access to this file. And I mean, this is totally overkill. I would not recommend doing that. But, um, like, I mean, being able to see this option up here is really the more helpful one. So, yeah, I'll copy this to the clipboard. And what I'll do now is just run that. Uh, not this. I want to run this one. And so it'll relabel that file. And now we should be able to see problem in our directory listing. So that's cool. And, um, uh, yeah, um. Uh, we can also test this out even further. Like, uh, for example, if I just do a uh, Boolean off on HTTPD enable home dirs, uh, we're going to get that forbidden message again. If I try to go to uh, tilde banana, and we're going to get the forbidden. And now if I tail var log messages, we're going to get another helpful message from the troubleshoot server that's telling us to, where is it? Sometimes it might even be easier to rep or SE alert. There's a little tip for you. And there we go. So uh, we probably want to run this one. Right. So I'll just paste that in here. And once again, uh, we're going to get some output. And it's telling us um, it's most confident in running a set SE bool P to enable home -ders. Uh, so this is totally on point. This is basically the same thing that we just did. So we can copy that. It's pretty handy. The other options are okay, I guess, but really the top one is usually the right one. So yeah, um, uh, I'll scroll down here and just show you some other stuff like the raw audit messages. So like com is for command. So that's HTTPD. Uh, Dev is the block device where the file system is at, where all the where all the business is going on. Uh, path is like the path to the file that's in question, and s context is source context, and t context is target context. So yeah, just uh, a little look at that, those messages. You can also check var log audit audit dot log to get some information about that if you're curious as well. And yeah, I can just run that. Uh, se bool command and I should be able to access my stuff again that's good and yeah problem solved so really the point that I want to drive home here is that we have a lot of information and tools to help us troubleshoot se Linux and so when you're diagnosing a system for problems your best bet is to install this troubleshooting server package trigger and access denial in whatever service needs to be the problem and then check varlog messages for these uh, helpful entries. 
okay? And that's really all I have to show for this video. If you'd like to learn more about SE Linux or other topics, just leave a comment to let me know. Uh, I just want to say making these videos helps me learn things too. So uh, it's all a mutual benefit going on here. And yeah, I hope the series was helpful, and thanks for watching.